shade, the world mighty King eternal, Jesus Emmanuel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. So I'd just like to start by welcoming you all to our virtual series of Advent services. Each Sunday we'll come together in prayer, music and art in preparation for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ at Christmas. So let's begin with a prayer. Lord Jesus, as we begin our Advent journey, we come to you with our hearts open in prayer. Guide us along your path. Help us to know the purpose for which you have created us. Keep us free from all sin and bring us safely to everlasting joy with you. Amen. And so now we'll listen to our scripture readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, yourself are our father. Our redeemer is your ancient name. Why, Lord, leave us astray from your ways and harden our hearts against fearing you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your inheritance. Oh, that you would tear the heavens open and come down. At your presence the mountains would melt. No ear has heard, no eye has seen any God but you act like this for those who trust him. You guide those who act with integrity and keep your ways in mind. You were angry when we were sinners. We had long been rebels against you. We were all like men and clean, all that integrity of ours like filthy clothing. We have all withered like leaves and our sins blew us away like the wind. No one has invoked your name or roused himself to catch hold of you. For you hid your face from us and gave us up to the power of our sins. And yet, Lord, you are our father. We the clay, you the potter. We are all the work of your hand. A reading from the Gospel according to St Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Be on guard, stay awake, because you never know when the time will come. It is like a man travelling abroad. He has gone from home and left his servants in charge, each with his own task, and he has told the doorkeeper to stay awake. So stay awake, because you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Evening, midnight, cock crow dawn. If he comes unexpectedly, he must not find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. For you, O Lord, my soul in stillness waits. Truly my hope is in you. Truly. 
Where do we come from? There are many answers to this simple question. You know, where do I come from? My parents, maybe? Well, I was born in Lancaster, although my family came from India. It's a very open-ended question, lots of different answers. But one fundamental answer is given in today's first reading. And it says, Lord, you are our father, we the clay, you the potter. We are all the work of your hand. We the clay, you the potter. So we, we fundamentally come from God. You know, we are God's creation. So where do you come from? I think the next time anybody asks me that question, I'm going to respond, I'm a child of God, you know. Where do you come from? I'm a child of God. What greater dignity can we have than being called children of God? This is what we all are and this is how we should all see each other. We're all children of God, all related, all brothers and sisters in Christ. When we think of each other in this way, it changes our whole outlook on life and on each other. Where do we come from? We come from God. So where are we going? Different question, but the same answer, God. We came from God, we were born, we live out our life. We live out our life in this world with our families, in our communities, in the church. Then after a short span of time, we die. The breath leaves our bodies, our heart stops beating. The blood stops pumping around our veins. Our bodies shut down and we become cold. Our souls journey back to God. I witnessed my first death this year. My own dear mum. During her last few hours we sat by her side and I watched her breathing getting shallower and shallower. She half opened her dark eyes and seemed to gaze off into the distance. She took one shuddering breath, stopped, then took one more and was gone. For anyone who has witnessed death, the moment is obvious. One second she was there, the next second she wasn't. There were no angels visibly coming to greet her, no heavenly light. She was simply here, and then a breath later, she was gone. One single breath. The difference between life and death is one single breath. This life seems to pass so quickly. A few short years and we're gone, a mere blink in the eye of eternity. But death isn't the end. We're simply returning to our true home. We come from God, we return to God. But what is our purpose? What is the purpose of our lives? Why are we here? You know, if you go into any bookshops, you'll see many, many books written on this subject. But for Christians, our answer is simple and obvious. We are created in love by God and our purpose is to love. Our purpose is to love. How we do that is different and unique for each one of us, but we're created to love. In the Gospel today, Jesus says, it's like when the master has gone from home and left his servants in charge, each with their own task. We all have a task, we all have a purpose, an individual and unique purpose. But the aim we all share is to love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our souls and with all our minds and to love our neighbour as ourself. Everything we do and say should come from the motivation of loving God and loving each other. So where do we come from? We come from God. Where are we going? We're going to God. What is our purpose? 
Our purpose is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul and with all our minds and to love our neighbour as ourself. So there are three questions which we can take on us in this Advent journey. Where we come from, where we're going and what is our purpose? I wish you all a very blessed and holy Advent. Let's keep our eyes fixed on the Lord and pray for each other, especially during this pandemic and this lockdown. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for the poor and the homeless this Christmas. We pray that they might not get unnoticed as having your Son Jesus within them. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so they might be inclined to give generously to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for world leaders. Give them your Holy Spirit so they might act with honesty and integrity in every decision they make. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church on earth, in particular the parishes of Blackpool. Sustain us with the communion of saints in heaven and guide us on, on the path of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Lord, Help us to stay awake and be prepared for your coming this Advent. Give us the courage to repent of our sins and clear space in our hearts for you to dwell. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we may alert and resist the temptation to fall asleep at this most important time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, you sent your Son into the world to be the Saviour of all who believe and promised that he will come again to be our judge. Increase in us the attitude of watchfulness and prayer so that we may be ready to meet him with our lives active in his service. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.